Okay, so using spatial transcriptomics, we can measure 480 genes inside the cells in these colon tissues. But what about the remaining genes? So now let's introduce a complementary technology to spatial transcriptomics called single cell transcriptomics or single cell RNA sequencing. And single cell RNA sequencing is also a new technology, but it's a little older than spatial transcriptomics. And single cell RNA sequencing allows us to measure the expression of all 20,000 genes inside individual cells. So how does this work? Uh, let's look at the experimental workflow together. So we're gonna start with a solid tissue, like the colon, and we're gonna take a piece of the colon, and we're gonna take that tissue, and we're gonna dissociate it into the individual cells that make up the tissue. So the tissue is being dissociated into single cells, and then we isolate those single cells, meaning we spatially separate them. This often takes place by placing the cells inside liquid droplets. Uh, the cells are now isolated, and then we can extract from every single cell RNA, and this is gonna tell us which genes are expressed inside that single cell. Now, there's a lot of details here, but maybe the most important detail is this step, which is that we have to dissociate the tissue. And so when we dissociate the tissue, we've lost all spatial information, meaning we don't know in the colon which cell was next to which cell anymore because we've broken up the tissue into individual cells, isolated them, and taken out the RNA. So that's one really important thing to uh, remember here is that single cell transcriptomics or single cell RNA sequencing does not give you any spatial information. And that's what actually spurred some of the developments in spatial transcriptomics, which was people wanted to know where the cells are in the tissue. But this is still a very powerful technology because we're measuring all 20,000 genes in the cell. So let's finish this up now. We have the RNA that's been extracted from single cells and we can use an enzyme from viruses called reverse transcriptase to make that RNA molecule into a complementary DNA molecule. DNA is a much more stable molecule to work with, and we can make many, many copies of it, which is what's needed to carry out next generation sequencing. And in next generation sequencing, we read out the sequence of the DNA, and that's A, T, Cs, and Gs. And once we've read out that sequence, we can go and look up what gene that sequence came from, because as I said earlier, the entirety of the human genome has been sequenced, so we know where all the genes are in the genome, what their sequences are, and to some extent what those genes do. So once we look up these sequences, we can say you know, what gene was expressed in what cell. So this is the type of data you would see from a single cell RNA sequencing experiment, where the rows are each of the 20,000 genes in the human genome, and uh, the columns are individual single cells. And for each cell, I can tell you how many times I counted a gene transcript. So in cell one, for instance, I counted the gene transcript for TCF7 three times, versus in cell three, I never saw it. In contrast, uh, in cell one, we don't see very many copies of EPCAM, the epithelial cell marker, but we see a lot of copies in cell three. And so this generates a very large data set. You know, you have 20,000 genes, we can look at 10,000 or 100,000 cells at once, so you have millions and millions of entries here. So this is a really, really rich data set. So now let me give you an example of single cell transcriptomics applied to ulcerative colitis. So this is a study uh, performed by Dr. Romnick Xavier, who is one of the organizers of this challenge, and he's at uh, Mass General Hospital and the Broad Institute. And in this study, the Xavier group took uh, patients with ulcerative colitis and took tissue biopsies and prepared each of those biopsies for single cell transcriptomics. So now every single cell that comes from this ulcerative colitis sample is going to have 20,000 genes expression measured. So every single cell is a vector of 20,000 measurements, and we have thousands of these cells. And here we're showing these cells projected into a low dimensional embedding called TSNE. This is a nonlinear dimensional reduction technique. And the idea of this technique is that if two cells have similar gene expression in the high dimensional space, then when we show them in the TSNE embedding in two dimensions, those two cells are going to be close to one another in that uh, embedding. So here we have uh, the cells colored by the cell type. And if we look at this blue cluster here, we see that the genes that are being expressed here mark B cells. And if we look at the uh, kind of pinkish cluster, we see these genes are uh, 
expressed normally in T cells, and finally in this green cluster we see genes that mark myeloid cells. So this is a good way of sort of looking at single cell data, and what you can really recognize is that we're getting, you know, thousands of cells and lots of data because we're getting 20,000 genes per cell. So this is a really high dimensional data set. And again, we're getting 20,000 genes and not just the 480 genes that you would normally measure doing a spatial transcriptomics experiment. Okay, so now let's recap what you've learned uh, in these three sections of lecture two. Uh, the first thing we talked about is that gene expression programs are groups of genes that are expressed together during a biological process and that they can dramatically change as we go from health to disease. So comparing normal colon to ulcerative colitis or normal colon to colorectal cancer, the gene expression programs have dramatically changed. And then the second thing that you've been seeing is that there are many technologies that we can use to profile and measure human tissues. So we've introduced uh, what pathologists do, which is take tissue and stain with H&E to look at tissue structure. We've introduced the Xenium spatial transcriptomic experiment, where we're able to measure 500 genes and their locations in space in the tissue. And we've introduced single cell RNA sequencing or single cell transcriptomics, where we can measure the expression of 20,000 genes in a cell. However, we lose the spatial information. So I think what you probably appreciate is that each of these technologies has different strengths and weaknesses. And a common approach we take in biology is to apply multiple technologies to a tissue in order to leverage the strengths of each technology and get a more holistic view of what's happening in the tissue and what's going wrong in disease. So we've covered at this point biology and technology. And in the next lecture series, we're actually going to go into what data you will be provided with during the competition and what the actual crunches are, what are the actual problems you're going to be working on with these data sets.